Hello, my name is Dr. Cameron Agaev. I'm a neurosurgeon. In this session, we're going to talk about the pituitary adenomas, symptoms, and the treatment options. So, in this particular session, we're going to talk about the pituitary gland and its functions. Pituitary gland is a small uh, gland that is located under the brain um, over the nasal cavity. It is spaced in its place called uh, pituitary fossa and is directly under the brain at the skull base and it's um, in the uh, neighborhood adjacent to the nasal cavity to the place we call sphenoid sinus, which is an extension of the nasal cavity. So it's located in between the nasal cavity and the brain. And pituitary gland itself is under control of the brain. It is connected with the brain with a pituitary stalk and the part of the brain which is in direct, direct connection with the pituitary gland controls the pituitary gland function which itself controls function of other glands in the body and those glands include thyroid adrenal the ovaries you know testicles and uh, growth hormone and, and, and other functions so pituitary gland is a major endocrine gland that is controlling other hormones in the body. So the hormones that are made by pituitary gland, um, they like prolactin, um, you know, uh, TCH and uh, GRH and, and other, you know, the growth hormone and other hormones, bunch of hormones that pituitary uh, gland making is making, they controlling the other glands of the body. So, um, when we have pituitary adenoma, when we have the tumor growing inside the pituitary gland, uh, those hormones may be either activated or suppressed, depend on the type of the cells that constitute that adenoma. For example, if there is a type of tumor we call somatotropinoma, which is basically the tumor, the benign tumor of the cells that make a hormone responsible for growth, the growth hormone. They will make excess of growth hormone and there will be associated symptoms with excess of growth hormone in, in body. The clinical symptoms will be different in children and in adult people, but nevertheless, the, the majority of symptoms will come from excess of uh, growth hormone, but in some cases the pituitary adenoma does not have functional hormone, uh, so there is no hormone at all or the hormone is not functional and because of adenoma is growing and pushing the normal pituitary gland, pituitary function will be diminished. Okay, so in this case we'll have scenario like hypo pituitarism, so the diminished uh, pituitary hormones in the body. Another clinical symptom of pituitary adenoma would be when the adenoma grows and reaches a uh, certain degree when it starts pushing the optic nerves, the nerves that convey information, the visual information from our eye to, to the brain. In that case, people will start, uh, the patients will start having problems with their vision. They will have blurred vision, they will have narrowing of the visual fields and other issues. So, depending on the type of the um, tumor and the size of the tumor, the patients usually have endocrine problems like prolactinoma, like somatotropinoma, like gonadotropinoma, or teratropinoma, or adrenocorticotropinoma, you know, they may have various endocrinological um, symptoms, and pituitary adenoma itself may present as a mass that compressing 
uh, and when it's compressing, it's mostly compressing the optic pathways with visual problems. When it comes to treatment of pituitary adenomas, it depends on the symptoms and the severity of the disease. So, um, so there, is, there are various treatments available, and it depends on whether the pituitary adenoma is making excessive hormones or it's not hormonally active. So this is the first step to, to differentiate. Is it a hormonally active adenoma or not? And if it's a hormonally active adenoma, what type of the hormone is making? So, for example, for the most frequently found adenoma type, which is prolactinoma, there is a med there is medical treatment available, which is called a dopa agonist therapy. We give um, medications that are very similar chemically to do dopamine, and the dopamine is um, mediator that controls prolactin in the pituitary gland and because we're giving medication that is similar to dopamine it will go to pituitary and suppress the function of pituitary in terms of making excess prolactin so prolactin which is um, most frequently encountered pituitary adenoma type can be controlled with with dopa agonist therapy. Um, similar therapy is available for somatotropinoma. For example, we give um, sandostatin, which basically blocks production of uh, growth hormone in the pituitary gland and stops, uh, seizes excess of production of growth hormone by pituitary. For other hormones, uh, they're not much available treatments in terms of suppressing the adenoma function and forcing it it's to make less hormone uh, so uh, it has to be treated with uh, surgically or with other methods when we have pituitary adenoma reaching a particular degree when it starts compressing especially compressing the optic pathways then we have to think about surgical options so in, the, in briefly recapping, when we have prolactinoma, the first line of treatment would be conservative medical treatment with dopa agonist therapy, even in the cases with large pituitary adenomas, because the uh, dopa agonist therapy can shrink the tumor, you know, in a very short time and relieve the pressure. But when it comes to other types of pituitary adenomas, it depends. If we have hormonally active pituitary adenoma that's making excess of hormone and compromise the body function, it has to be treated surgically. But if we, if the adenoma is not making as many, uh, hormones, is not hormonally active and not compressing anything, it might be watched with serial observation. So, when it comes to treatment, so surgical treatment of pituitary adenomas, there are two ways to reach the pituitary gland. One of them is, would be going from the nose, underneath the pituitary gland, open the sphenoid sinus that contains the pituitary fossa, the nest for pituitary gland, and remove the tumor from inside the nose which is an excellent choice and in a vast majority of cases pituitary surgery is performed from the nose. Nowadays the standard of treatment is endoscopic removal when the surgeon uses endoscope to go all the way to sphenoid sinus to visualize the tumor, to inspect the tumor and achieve resection. Another way would be going uh, underneath the brain during a craniotomy and going underneath the frontal lobe or temporal lobe and remove the tumor under the brain, working under the brain. This type of procedure is performed relatively rarely for specific indications when the tumor cannot be fully removed um, endonasally uh, from inside the nose. Both 
surgery types have their own indications. Thank you for watching this video regarding pituitary adenoma and its treatment. You can always find more information on our website.